Welcome everyone to Real Leaders for the Global Goals. I'm your host, Kevin Edwards. Alongside me today, we have Monica Ramirez, the founder of Justice for Migrant Women. Monica, thanks for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Justice for Migrant Women, what does that mean to you? So, Justice for Migrant Women is focused on making sure that women who cross borders, whether it be country borders, state borders, city borders to work, find have equitable circumstances in their workplace. We want to make sure that women have the mobility to move, to be able to do their jobs, to be able to um, have you know, upward mobility through their economic opportunities. But we also want to make sure that women um, who are migrating for work are able to do so in under safe conditions. What do you think the misconception of migrant workers and women are in today's day and age, and why is it such a problem? So, you know, I'm the daughter and uh, granddaughter of migrant farm workers, and I think that in our country, people often think of migrant workers as only agricultural workers who travel from state to state to pick crops. And the truth is that in our country today, there are many people who migrate for work. You know, there are people who travel um, to different states to do disaster cleanup. There are people who travel um, to do um, high-skilled labor. You know, the definition of who a migrant worker is in our country is flawed because often people think that it's low-paid workers. But there are people in all fields and all industries who are moving across state lines and borders in order to do their jobs. And so um, I think that there needs to be more respect given um, to migrant workers in all the fields that they're working in. And there needs to be an understanding that if people didn't move in order to do, conduct work, our economy basically would come to a screeching halt. So you mentioned agriculture being one of the industries of migrant workers. Is that the main focus that you focus on right now, or do you kind of do all uh, industries? Yeah, so I um, have spent the majority of my career representing migrant farm worker women um, who okay. work in nurseries, um, on farms, and um, in packing sheds, you know, work with produce. Um, but I also have represented women who've migrated to work in places like hotels and restaurants, small factories. Um, most of the women who I've represented have been immigrant women workers. Um, often they have fled their countries of origin because they've been victims of gender-based violence. And so they're coming to the United States for physical security, not just economic security, and they have tended to, to be employed uh, tended to be employed in, in agriculture and some of these other low paid jobs. It's been statistically proven time after time with more female leadership, there's more profitability and, and equity for all. Um, is that another issue that you focus on? And, and uh, what are some of the solutions that your organization has done to help uh, raise these uh, women to another uh, position and level? So gender equity is at the heart of, it, of what we do as an organization. Um, one of the key issues that we have worked on has been ending workplace sexual violence. So, you know, um, I wrote the letter that was published in Time Magazine that's known as the Dear Sisters Letter that helped spark what's known as the Time's Up movement. Um, and that was uh, because farm worker women were reaching out to women in entertainment to say that we understand what they're going through and we wanted to be supportive of them. And um, so sexual harassment is a major issue because if people feel like they are under threat of harassment in the workplace, then they're not going to be able to do their job as well. They're not going to be able to produce as much. They're not going to be able to really achieve their full potential. Um, so for us, sexual harassment is very much tied to economic stability. Um, but we also work on things like, um, you know, ending pregnancy discrimination and making sure that women have the opportunity to get the same kinds of, um, you know, promotions and other opportunities, training. Um, and more than anything, uh, we try to raise consciousness about the fact that there are women, like farm worker women, who still don't have basic rights in this country. So farm worker women still aren't covered by the most basic employment laws in this nation. Um, and so for us, gender equity doesn't just mean giving someone a better job, it also means making sure that when people are in their jobs, they actually have legal protections. Uh, for your viewpoint, are you, are you focusing on a grassroots movement to say, hey, we need to change the attitudes of the people themselves to uh, encourage them to, to obtain a higher position? Or are you focusing on the leadership of current industries and saying, hey, let's change the attitude of them to think we need to focus on this untouched um, you know, market, an emerging market in, in America and around the world? All or of both. It. Yeah, or both. All of it. 
So we're focusing on the leadership of migrant women workers in the communities where they live, making sure that they have what they need to be able to rise to the, um, to the ranks where they can be in a, in a position to change the policies and workplaces. Right. Um, but we're working on uh, changing attitudes of employers towards their employees so they understand that if they treat the workers better, they actually will have better outcomes for the business right. too. Okay. Um, and then the other thing is we are trying to make sure that um, from a grassroots standpoint, that workers across industries are linked, right? So I had the honor of going hmm. to the Golden Globes with Laura Dern. Oh, you did? Um, nice. Yeah, a couple of years ago, um, after the Me Too breakthrough happened and when the Time Set movement was first launched. And that moment of walking the red carpet with women entertainment um, was really crucial in, in the grassroots movement work that we were doing because it showed women from these very high paid, very visible, positions linking arms with people like me who are fighting you know at the grassroots levels in communities for migrant farm worker women who make eleven thousand dollars a year so we are employing all the tactics um, to win justice for migrant women including culture shift monica you've been doing a lot throughout your career with your head down and just trying to uh, raise awareness around this and create that impact um, when you look back are, are you aware of the impact and the, the train that's coming that you've been able to start and create you know, I've just been a lot of people working really hard over a lot of years, and I'm just really fortunate that I've been able to work alongside them. And, um, you know, I come from really strong women, and I feel like the work I'm doing is carrying on the legacy of my grandmother and great-grandmother and my own mother. Uh, you say you come from very strong women. How important is it for other you know, emerging females to see, you know, someone like them in power? Oh, it's crucial. If you don't see people who look like you right. in yeah. positions of power, then you don't understand that that's something that you can also strive towards. Um, and so that's actually another part of my work has been, you know, meeting with young women and young girls so that they can learn about my career trajectory. They can ask me questions about what it means to be a lawyer because I'm a lawyer. They can talk to me about applying to school and things like that. Like I met this morning for an, an hour with a young woman who just wanted to know more about how I do my work. And so we need to put ourselves in positions where we're making ourselves available to young women and girls so that they can ask us questions. And you know, the hope is that those young girls and women are gonna actually um, look at the work that we've done and do it better. And so that's what I've been trying to do in my work. I've had the opportunity to learn from my mothers and grandmothers and aunts um, and have been able to build on their vision. And, and my hope is that my work is giving some inspiration to other young people so that they can then come behind and, and you know, make, like I really believe that young people are saving our world right now. And, and my job is just to help make space so that they can do that. I like that a lot. Uh, so what about um, being a social entrepreneur? Uh, so maybe, First off, let me explain to our audience what a social entrepreneur is and also like what you've learned from being a social entrepreneur. It's very difficult to be an entrepreneur, but to be a social entrepreneur, raise capital, have people take you seriously about your business and your initiatives, very difficult. Let me explain to our audience how you would define social entrepreneurship and what you've learned. Yeah, so a social entrepreneur is not much different than an entrepreneur that's in private business. Um, it's someone who has an idea um, that's focused on doing social good, and essentially we ha we create startups. We create our own organizations that are startups that have a, a, a mission that's focused on social justice and addressing some of the, the worst social ills in our world. Um, and I am a social entrepreneur. I have started a number of different organizations, um, mainly focused on the rights of women. And you're right, it's really difficult because when you have a business, you know, and you're, you're selling products, like you basically have to get people to buy into whatever it is that you're trying to sell, that it's, you know, whether it be purchasing from your restaurant or buying a particular product that you're selling in the store, like they have to buy into something, and it, but it's tangible. They get something, they pay the money and they get something in return. And, with, and as a social entrepreneur, we have to get people to buy into our vision. Mm. Right? We have to get people to buy into the way that we see the world and what we believe the solutions are to some of these big problems. And people don't get a return right away. So if we sell someone on the vision of what peace looks like or justice looks like or equity looks like, the return might never come in our lifetimes. Right, And so getting people to actually take a leap of faith that the solutions that you're presenting you know, could move the needle just a little bit and are worth putting money towards, um, that is sometimes pretty difficult because people um, 
want to know when they're going to get the return. And so I've been really fortunate that in my work, um, people have been able to see the vision, they've been able to understand exactly what we're trying to achieve, and they've, they've put their faith in us, and they put their resources in us. And, um, you know, so whenever people say that I have been able to make great change in my work, like I think I've had something to do with some of the change that's been made, but the truth is, it's the investors who believed in the vision. It's the people who march, you know, march alongside us. It's the people like you who are lifting up our stories. It's many people who make social entrepreneurism work. And, and that just goes to show how connected we all are in these actions. Uh, well, Monica, it's been a pleasure speaking with you today. Thank you. Uh, we talked about a lot. We talked, we talked a bit. About Justice for migrant women, kind of what it is. Is it starting on a grassroots level? Is it going to leadership? Uh, we talked about uh, how you can uh, uh, think about treating women and employing more uh, female leadership positions, regardless uh, of where they come from, as well as the other point that I'm blanking in my head right now, which was on uh, discrimination in the workplace. Uh, and, and lastly, you kind of wrapped it up with being a social entrepreneur, how difficult it is in selling that vision um, and articulating it to the people that need it most. It takes a lot of leadership, Monica. Thank you, thank you for having me. And I just have to say one thing to those who are watching, which is this. For everyone watching, you have to understand that we all can play a role in making the world better. I'm doing my part every day, and you know, Real Leaders is doing its part by elevating those who are trying to make a difference. But you who are watching this, you can also do your part, and we need you to be our allies and our champions. Well said, Monica. Last question I do have for you, though, is what is your definition of a real leader? My definition of a real leader is someone who is able to uh, know when to follow, to know when the, the time is right for them to speak up and step out, and also is someone who has enough courage to be able to both listen and to be able to help make space so that other people's voices can be heard. So it's not just one quality for me, it's a combination of qualities. And it, and it has to do just as much with being the person in the front, you know, the person that's visible, as it does being the person that's in the background that's making the wheels turn. From Monica Ramirez, I'm Kevin Edwards, telling you all to set that vision, be persistent like Monica here, join the movement. We're all interconnected somehow in some way, shape or form. And always folks, keep it real. Thanks, Monica. Keep it real. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Keep